Welcome back to part two of chapter four, programs and apps. Now, as we continue on, here is a huge piece of software that I feel is really underutilized by students, and that would be some sort of note-taking software. So it's application, there's many of them that enable users to enter type text, handwritten comments, drawings, sketches, photos, etc. So if we have a digital tablet with a digital pen, it makes this really easy. And you're going to see in future videos where I'm actually going to utilize uh, a tablet to show you some things, how particular things work, etc. I want to quickly introduce you to OneNote. So OneNote is one of Microsoft's note-taking applications. I think this is a great way to introduce you if you have OneNote, if you've downloaded it, watch the two minute video. But look, you can take notes anywhere on the page. We can do this with a keyboard. We can do it uh, if we have a touch screen. We can do it via touch. We can do it a digital pen, which is most people do it. And the great thing is if, if we do it clean enough, it'll convert into text for us. So it's amazing. We can, from our notes, we can create a notebook See, this is just like you're used to when we had the paper notebook and the pen, right? And students took notes. From there, we can add sections. To the sections, we can add pages, okay? And then content. And by the way, we can put a ton of content in there. Like it says, graphics and videos and our handwritten stuff and other things that we do, information on trips that we import in. There's a lot of connectors in here that will automatically import data. Uh, in as well. Create your first page and you're up and running. So definitely a software that you should look to utilize, especially in college. All right. It's a wonderful way to keep that information, to find it easily. Um, and then, you know, digitize more of that work and learning that you do. So calendar and contact management software. Here's a great example. I use Google. This is Google Calendar. I, I like it because I can create you know, different calendars for certain things. I have a calendar for personal stuff. I can share those calendars with family. I can have a calendar that I don't share. I have a calendar for work, for example, and it all goes to one place. So, And of course, with the home automation, a lot of times I can start my morning by just saying, okay, gee, what's my day look like? Boom. It'll take and pop my calendar up on the TV. I can take a look at it or it'll tell me what appointments are there, etc. It just allows me to keep track of my day. And if you're not doing it, I would highly suggest utilizing your calendar to schedule time for things like studying and things like breaks, things to go out and have a good time as well. So a software suite we already talked about. It is accumulation of software. Uh, an example is Microsoft Office 365, which you are required to download. You're required to download Word and PowerPoint and Excel, those three programs. But those combined together normally sell together as a suite of software. So when we talk about uh, Google, we're talking about Google Suite or what they call G Suite. And that's the same thing. It's word processing and spreadsheets and a lot of other stuff that Google adds in. It's the integration of your email and your calendar. Uh, if you use Google at all, you know that you can actually start setting things and Google learns, oh look, here's a email that confirms a trip that you're taking. Let's go ahead and just pop that information onto the calendar, for example. And then you can share that information back and forth. We talked a little bit about project management software. So Microsoft Project is an example. And again, I don't want you all to limit your thought process to this is for managing the creation of a website, the creation of software applications. We can utilize Microsoft Project to manage the build of a new product in a business, for example. Who's working on the prototype? When is it expected to be done? Uh, when is testing and quality expected to be done? When, do, how long does marketing need with the product? How much marketing time are we going to do? When do we put this product into our production schedule with the other projects, products that we produce, etc.? So don't limit to just the idea of software, but we can schedule, track, we can analyze events, we can see if we're on time, we can um, accumulate costs of a project. So. A lot of times we want to know if a business wants to be successful, they need to know exactly how much a product costs 
throughout its development life cycle, its production, what parts and components, how much we're paying for them, how much it costs us to produce it, and then how much we can sell it for. And of course, the difference between cost of goods sold and what we sell it for, that's revenue. And out of that revenue has to come other things like marketing and labors and other things. So accounting software, well, Quicken, that's what, or QuickBooks, I should say. Uh, QuickBooks accounting software, one of the biggest uses, use, used, boy, I can't talk today accounting software packages. Used to be we would download it or go get a disk from Costco, install it to our computer, and now we can utilize it online. Personal finance software. This is the one I use, which is Quicken. Okay, it's uh, there's a lot of them out there. Mint, for example. I highly, highly suggest using one of these softwares if you're not. First of all, it makes your financial life so much easier. It connects to my bank. It downloads those umpteen million debit card transactions I make for 99 cents for a soda here and, you know, $2.99 for a coffee here, etc. The cool thing is once you go in and categorize things and it remembers things, every time you go to Starbucks, it goes into a category. And the fact is you're going to know exactly how much you're spending, where you're spending it, so that you can determine if there's a better use of your money, for example. Uh, Everything is in here. My mortgage is in here. My investments are in here. I know exactly how much I'm quote unquote worth today, how much debt I have, when I can pay it off. Plus, there's ways for you to look at investing, look at, like I said, net, work, net worth, planning for future events, um, college savings, you name it. Legal software, we've talked about that. So, uh, my attorney, home and business, can help you do things like, you know, legalized bill of sales. So not just, hey, I'm selling a 1992 Toyota XYZ to, you know, to Joe Blow. Boom. These are legal documents that we would find that that are um, that will stand up in court, for example. Okay, so many legal documents that we can create on our own. Things that we can do. We can go file these with the courts and know that they're going to be correct. So. Uh, tax preparation software, again, you know, Tax Act is, is one. That's the one listed here. Helps you fill out your taxes, takes you through a series of questions. Do you have a small business? Yes, okay, we're going to need to do these forms. Uh, do you have, you know, deductions on your personal income tax? We need to do these forms, et cetera. Which schedules we need to do? You know, for profit and loss from farming, for example. Long-term capital gains, if you have any of those. Itemized deductions. So if you're going to take those, and the cool thing is, by the way, that by using Quicken and having all of that information, it makes tax time so much easier because if you have a category that's a deduction, say childcare, boom, at the end of the year, you're not looking through your receipts. You're getting a number that says you spent XYZ on childcare in this past year. It's wonderful software. These are the benefits of utilizing software on a personal basis. Document management system, so application that provides meaning uh, means for sharing, distributing, searching through documents by converting them into a format that can be viewed by any user. So a lot of times now, these things are converted into web-based apps um, and a web-based presence. We can go out, we can search the document. We see a lot of the things that go on now in documents within Microsoft Word itself or in the operating system where not only can we search for the title, but we can search for content, and that's huge. But remember in a company, let me give you an example. At Columbia Aircraft, which was a manufacturing company in Bend, Oregon, that, that made an airplane, we had close to 10,000 Excel spreadsheets in that company. You're not going to search all those at one time. It would take weeks. Whereas with the document management system, as we store documents and put keywords on them and et cetera, and it goes ahead and does that work ahead of time it, and stores that information in a database, makes it much easier to find the documents that we're looking for, okay? Other software, human resources software, accounting software, engineering software, Autodesk, AutoCAD, manufacturing software, marketing software. Um, you know, so when we talk about marketing, we're talking about marketing and sales, mostly sales, salesforce.com, which I'm sure you've heard of. 
distribution software, custom service software, software for information technology staff. So specific software for us to use to manage networks, to manage security, to update systems, keep them up to date, keep them healthy, um, you know, get rid of those bugs that hackers can use to, to get into systems, for example. So in chapter five, we're gonna talk about uh, security. And right now that is really my point of interest is cybersecurity. So I'll share a few things with you there when we get there. So graphics and media software, you know, computer-aided design, CAD, as we talked about, desktop publishing. Desktop publishing, you can think of as Microsoft Word on steroids. It allows us to really get minute, get much more in the way of fonts and coloring and pictures and placement. We can put things exactly where we want on the page. It tends to produce a higher quality document so that those documents can be taken to a printer and printed into high quality documents that we don't necessarily get with Word. So, uh, you know, Microsoft Paint, image editing software, Photoshop. We now have online free software with like Pixlr, if you've used it before. So Pixlr is like Photoshop, but online. Let me see if I can bring it up here. And I'll drag it over, give you an example. So here's Pixlr. And what we do with Pixlr is we come down here and we can use the editor and express editor. It's a web app. So we've been talking about applications. This is a web app. I can start with a brand new picture or I can open an image from my computer. So it's gonna take that image from my computer, upload it to the web-based application so that I can do things like get rid of red eye, crop the picture, add text and graphics and do just amazing things just like we would do with Photoshop, for example. So, you know, the idea of um, Photoshopping somebody out of a picture. Oh, that's a great picture of me, but I didn't want uh, my Uncle Bill in the picture too. Ugh. But I want to use that picture of me for my LinkedIn site or, you know, whatever the case may be on my Facebook. So photo editing, we've talked enough about video and audio editing. Now, Interesting enough, I'm actually using right now a video software. I'm using the recorder portion called Camtasia Studio. And I'm using Camtasia to record this presentation. And what I'll end up doing when I'm done is I'll come back here and this is the software. And this is the previous presentation that I ran. And what I can do is I can come in here. And as you've seen with previous ones, I can zoom in. I can add graphics and create a published uh, video with audio that I can post to the web. Currently, I just got brand new, I just invested in a bunch of great technology that allows me to do 4K. So although I've been doing high definition at 1080, I can now do 4K video giving really, really high quality so that as I zoom in, things stay of high quality so they don't get all fuzzy. Multimedia authoring software allows users to combine text and graphics and audio and video and animation. To some degree, you can think of Camtasia as a multimedia authoring software, but because it does allow me to put a graphic in there, a video in there, combine videos, do some animation, but you can do full-fledged video editing in there as well. So it is not a top-notch editing software, you're not gonna see it used to create a, a multi, uh, like a movie, for example. Um, and when I mean movie, I mean a motion picture, okay? I create movies in there and it works just fine. I actually used it to do audio editing and just create an MP3, for example. Website authoring software, so today, you know, we can create web pages and websites and upload graphics and insert videos and do all these wonderful things without having to write any HTML code, for example. Media players, you're probably familiar with iTunes and that would be a media player software that you download to your computer. Oops, sorry about that, I was gonna cough, so I paused the video real quick. And store music, disc burning software so that I can turn MP3s back into say CDs uh, burn DVDs from movies that I've made, burn DVDs. I've had the occasion to burn DVDs of presentations that I've created because 
uh, folks have not necessarily had the internet and wanted to play presentations that I've created. All right, this is a perfect time to uh, stop part two. We'll look at personal interest applications in part three. Take care.